was raised a Jehovah's Witness. Being raised as a witness, you see the world much differently than everyone else. You are taught that Jehovah is the one and only God. Jesus is his son. They are two separate beings. Jesus came to earth and sacrificed himself so that God could forgive our sins. He is our ransom. Jehovah's Witnesses go to the Kingdom Hall as opposed to a church. All the people who go to the Kingdom Hall are part of what they call a congregation. The organization is arranged in a hierarchy. At the very bottom is women and children of the congregation. Women have no authority. They cannot teach men. They cannot even speak at a podium in front of men, as I am doing right now. They are not to question any decision made by a man. That is slander. The next level is a ministerial servant. These men have small responsibilities within the congregation. They are responsible for some of the teaching also. The men who carry the most responsibility in the congregation is the body of elders. They are responsible for everything and everyone in the congregation. The next level is the traveling overseers. These men travel all over and make sure the elders in the congregations are completing all of their duties. And the final level is the governing body. These men claim to be our channel of communication with God. They are the ones who create all the rules within the religion. All the members of the governing body are going to heaven. All members of the church are required to partake in field service. This is when you go door to door to tell the world about the religion. This is the only time it is deemed appropriate to socialize with people outside of the religion. People outside of the religion are called worldly. They are taught that these people do not yet know the truth or decide to ignore God's message. Because of this, they can be used by the devil, Satan, to tempt the witnesses and pull them away from the truth. This is including avoiding unnecessary contact with the court of law teachers, and people at school. Jehovah Witnesses believe that the end is near and that Armageddon is coming. Armageddon is the final test of mankind. After Armageddon, the faithful will be resurrected and brought back from the dead to live on paradise earth. All the unfaithful and non-believers will be done away with. So growing up, I was taught that everyone I knew outside of the religion, including my father, was going to be killed in Armageddon and I was going to live on paradise earth forever without my father. This was further incentive for me to avoid friendship with children at school. When a member of the church commits a serious sin and is not repentant, they are disfellowshipped. When a person is disfellowshipped, no one who is a member of the church can speak to them, not even a hello. A person can be disfellowshipped for a large range of unforgivable sins. One of them is slander. This is when you speak badly of the religion and its members. I could be disfellowshipped for giving this very speech. They are taught that someone who speaks badly about the religion and its members are demon possessed and are dangerous to associate with. Within this religion, love is conditional. I interviewed three women for this speech. They wish to remain anonymous, so I will be using false names. All of these women were members of this religion and were oblivious to all the horrible things that were hidden within the religion. My goal is that by sharing their stories with you, you will see the danger that is woven within blindly following any religion, belief system, or person. Donna lives in Manitowoc, Wisconsin. I know her personally since I was a child. When Donna was a young woman, she was molested by a man in the Manitowoc congregation. She never told anyone because she knew nothing was going to be done. Later in life, Donna married a man within the organization. They were married 14 years. All of these years, he abused her emotionally and physically. She had gone to the elders many times for help. Every time she was told it was her fault and to be a better wife. She listened even though she knew in her heart it was wrong. One night when he pushed her around, she called the police. He went to jail that night. The elders later talked to him about the incident. However, they never checked to see if her and their four children were okay. The elders were supposed to be her family. 
This is when she lost all respect for the organization. She was abused not only by her husband, but the, by the religion who turned blame on her. All of her family were Jehovah's Witnesses. The organization is all she knew. She did not want to disappoint them, her husband, or Jehovah all those years. If she did, they would no longer love her. In the end, we all can see the organization let her down. Donna was brave enough to think for herself. She told me, never allow the way you were brought up or the fear of disappointing your family cause you to compromise what you know is right thing in your heart or cause you to stay in a situation where you feel unsafe and unacknowledged. They have since been divorced, but the abuse did not end there. She was disfellowshipped, losing all of her friends and family she had known her whole life. To make matters worse, her children were taught not to speak to her because she was evil. They were isolated by her ex-husband ex and know nothing other than this religion. They are also terrified of terrified terrified of disappointing her father and their God. The, original, the religion is separating a capable and loving mother from her children. Nothing could be more devastating as a mother. She told me, my best chance of getting through to them is just letting them know I love them. Love for members in the religion is conditional. Donna knows that her unconditional love for her children will stand out to them when they can see past the isolated world their controlling father allows them to see. Jane has a son with a degenerative brain disease. When the Jehovah Witnesses came to her 10 years ago, they promised to save her son. She was immediately sucked into the religion. Her husband wanted nothing to do with the religion. The religion requires so much it enveloped her whole life. Her husband left her because of this. She never blamed him for leaving. Jane's mother was a drug addict, drug addict, so she grew up in foster homes. Jane's only family was the congregation. Jane sold insurance policies for a living. Four years ago, she was delivering an insurance policy to a man's house. When she arrived, she was raped. Afterwards, she immediately called a friend in the congregation to take her to the hospital. Jane told me my main injury beside the tearing was that I had bruised handprints around my neck. He was going to choke her to death if she did not submit. She immediately pressed charges. After she had told the whole story to the doctors, the elders expected the same. They asked her many awful questions, questions that should never be asked of a rape victim. After they interrogated her, they concluded that because I laid back to not be choked, I gave him permission. <laughs> they did not stop the disgusting blame on her there. They went on to say that she tempted men through the way she dressed and that I worked a job that caused me to be alone with men. This led them to temptation. They were only human. The elders blamed her and she believed them. She honestly felt she was responsible for being raped. Jane could have been disfellowshipped for being raped. In order to be forgiven, she had to dress even more conservatively, quit her job, and drop the charges against her rapist. It took Jane years to realize how messed up what the congregation did to her was. Over the years, Jane had one friend who stood by her side through all her struggles. This friend was a lesbian, one of the most evil people in the Bible. Jane told me, in my head, she represented the world. And that's where the love was. Jane is still recovering from this awful incident. She wanted to share her story with me so that this awful event could do some good. Love is the only thing she needed to get through this, and she found that in the world. Jane knows the difference unconditional love makes in our lives. She told me, I think the most beautiful thing in life is love, and if you're looking for it, this organization is not where you're going to find it. The third woman I interviewed was Trisha. Trisha lived a life without love. Her father was a kidnapper, 
a rapist, a child molester, a drug addict, an attempted murderer, and a ministerial servant within the congregation in very good standing. Her mother was a drug addict and exposed her children to many dangerous men. All of Trisha's family were Jehovah's Witnesses and hidden drug addicts. They even smuggled drugs across the borders of Mexico for many years. Both her mother's husbands and the man Trisha married abused her. She only married this man because her mother told her to. She always wanted to make her mother happy, but she never could, and it always ended with her being abused and betrayed. Trisha was a slave to her abusers, trapped in a religion and a family that lacked love. Trisha endured the unspeakable and went through more than I could possibly share with you. However, Trisha was able to sum up the danger that lies in this religion perfectly. She told me, the biggest problem I have with this religion is that it allows people, like my parents, to use it as a front for their criminal activity and the terrible lives they lead. There really is no recourse or having to answer for all the bad they have done and the lives they have hurt. They honestly believe, honestly believe that just praying for forgiveness absolves them of their sins. They leave the victims to pick up the broken pieces themselves, often with no help and no support from anyone. Witnesses are taught to mistrust the world so you are not trying to be a good witness. You don't go outside the witnesses for help. If you go to the congregation leaders looking for help, a lot of time, a lot of times what happens is that you are told that you are showing the proper forgiving spirit and you are not letting Jehovah take care of things. It is a broken system that blames the victim and takes all someone's own natural powers from them. It is a religion that preaches love and acceptance. But the reality is everything is conditional. Love and acceptance is only extended as long as members practice absolute obedience and question nothing, ever. This religion destroys lives, destroys families, and they do it largely unchecked. No one knows because they are really good at silencing the ones who leave. These women are the strongest people I have ever spoken to. These women have experienced more cruelty than I can fathom, yet remain kind and loving. They are living proof that you do not need religion to be moral. But also, being religious does not make you moral. After learning all this organization has hid from its members, I want no part of it. Needless to say, my mother and I are no longer Jehovah's Witnesses. And as a result, we have lost all of our friends and family within the organization. We were both told this was the one true religion, as did Donna, Jane, and Trisha. The majority of people in the religion believe it is the only way to save their lives in Armageddon and do not know the secrets that are being covered up. Learning all the cruelty and corruption that was hidden in this religion flipped our worlds upside down. Everything we devoted our lives to was nothing. We do not want any of you to experience the stress and confusion of losing everything. Unconditional love is what gave Donna, Jane, Trisha, and I the courage to share our stories. It is vital that you think for yourself so you are never blindly devoting your lives to a dangerous and awful cause.